Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we are taking a look at a fan favorite here on the channel, and that is Christina of Sweden. Here she is still in all of her hideous glory. So, Christina's first ability is known as Minerva of the North, and it makes it so that her buildings with at least three great work slots and wonders with at least two great work slots are automatically themed whenever they are filled up. She also gains the ability to construct the Queen's Bibliotheque in the Government Plaza. So Minerva of the North is an ability that I find to be good, but not until very late in the game. So the only buildings that are going to be affected with the theming bonus, and just to remind you all, theming just means that the uh, the uh, culture and tourism output of the Great Works is doubled um, whenever a building is themed. So the only building that you can get, I believe the only building that you can get that will actually um, be themed is the art or archaeological museums, because the um, the amphitheater and the broadcast center don't have enough great work slots. I guess the, uh, what's the one? There's another government, oh, the, um, oh my god, I cannot remember the name of it, but the, the, the tier 3 government building that gives you great work slots also can be themed. Um, but, so, your museums and most of your wonders, I believe that most of the wonders that have great work slots have at least two, so that's where you're going to get the majority of your theming bonuses from. Now, what this means is that it is going to take a while before you can actually feel, um, feel the, like, the impact of this ability, just because you're going to have to get to art museums and, arche and archaeological museums, and then you're going to have to wait to either recruit enough great artists to actually get, you know, a, a substantial bonus from this, or until you're able to build enough archaeologists to, um, to fill up your archaeological museums, once again, to get the theming bonus and actually feel the impact. So, Throughout like a good majority of the game, throughout throughout the, at least the first half and even a little bit into the second half, you're not going to get really anything from Minerva of the North unless you happen to get a good you know uh, a good wonder that you can put some great works of writing in. Um, you're not going to get much of a culture or tourism boost from Minerva of the North, but later on in the game, once you've you know accumulated a lot of great works, you have a lot of you know museums and wonders and things like that, then you are going to be uh, getting a quite substantial boost to your culture and tourism, normally, you know, in the realm of at least 200 or more, um, just from having those bonuses, so that is nice in the late game, but it really is just kind of unimpactful throughout most of the game, but it still is a fairly decent ability nonetheless, and one that is actually pretty good for Christina. Christina's second ability is known as Nobel Prize, and it makes it so that she receives 50 diplomatic favor when earning a great person. She also receives plus one great engineer point from her factories and plus one great scientist point from her universities. Also, if Sweden is in the game, there are three unique World Congress competitions that are added, and they are all Nobel Prize competitions. Um, I'm not going to cover them in this video, but I might put up a little thing where I, I, I will at least le uh, like link to the wiki page that has them listed. So Nobel Prize is yet again a pretty decent ability. It's not outstandingly amazing, but it does have, you know, some definitely good benefits to it. So for 150 diplomatic favor when earning a great person, that is like insanely high, especially in the early game. If you get, you know, like an early great scientist or like any of the other early great people, then you get a huge boost to your diplomatic favor just because early on in the game, people are generally only making, you know, one or two uh, diplomatic favor per turn. So getting a boost of 50 is pretty significant. The only issue is that the World Congress early on in the game doesn't have that many, like, insanely good, um, you know, things that you can enact, um, but even so, just getting that bonus diplomatic favor is pretty good. The, uh, the issue, though, is later on in the game, I find that it, there's a, definitely a longer period of time between when you're recruiting great people, just because, you know, as, as more and more people, um, like, start to get great people points, the cost of the great people goes up, and thus there are more turns that you have to go through before you recruit the next great person. So this does make it so that later on in the game, you get a lot less of a bonus from this diplomatic favor, just because you're going to be generally recruiting uh, less great people. And then since games tend to last longer now, I, I reached the point in my game as Sweden where pretty much all of the great people were recruited, and then I wasn't able to get any bonus diplomatic favor. So that is something that is just rather unfortunate. The other nice thing is getting those great engineer points from factories and getting great scientist points from universities, so this is really good for science victories just because you can get those great people bonuses in both of those, you know, district types that are helpful for science victories, so a very nice part of Sweden's bonus. And Nobel Prize as a whole, pretty good ability. Um, I do find that some of the, uh, the World Congress competitions are kind of helpful just because Sweden is, you know, Sweden is the one that allows them to be, to be even, you know, um, competing in the game, and Sweden is also a sieve that is just generally very good at winning those competitions, so that kind of acts as um, extra bonuses, and uh, Nobel Prize as a whole, a decent but not outstanding ability. 
Sweden's unique unit is known as the Corollian, and it is something that replaces the Pikan Shot. It has a melee strength of 55, a movement of 3, which is up 1 from the Pikan Shot, a maintenance cost of 3 gold per turn, which is 1 less from the Pikan Shot, and a production cost of 250, which is the same as the Pikan Shot. Additionally, the Corollian will gain plus 3 combat strength per point of unused movement um, whenever it attacks. So, the Corollian, I think, is a pretty good unique unit. It's not, you know, it's not insanely strong. It's not, you know, it didn't really, like, overly wow me. But it is actually pretty good, especially if you're able to, you know, surround a city and then have it so that your units don't have to move in that turn. Because then you get an additional 9 combat strength, and that's a significant boost, and you can, you can definitely hurt some things with that. So... From both an attacking and uh, a defensive standpoint, the Corollian definitely has its uses. Um, if you're just able to let them sit there and just kind of do their thing, then it is a very strong unit and something that I think you should at least make use of a little bit whenever you're playing a game as Sweden. Moving on to Sweden's unique tile improvement and unique building. First, we have the Open Air Museum, which is their unique tile improvement. Um, I didn't list it on the page here, but I should mention that it is unlocked with the Nationalism Civic. So you can build only one open air museum per city and it will provide plus two loyalty per turn to the city and then it will provide plus two culture and tourism for each type of terrain on which uh, at least one Swedish city is founded and there are five terrain types. You got snow, tundra, desert, plains, and grassland for a maximum of 10 culture and 10 tourism. So the open air museum is a tile improvement that if you have, you know, cities on those different types of, you know, um, terrain, then the open air museum is an insanely strong tile improvement because you get plus two loyalty and you can get, you know, up to plus 10 culture and 10 tourism um, on a single tile, which is very strong. It does suck that you can only build one per city, but I definitely get why, because otherwise it would be totally broken. Um, so this kind of just leads to the, the strategy of what, how you want to play as Sweden in making, just make sure that you can get at least um, three different terrain types settled because if you can get three different terrain types, then you get plus six culture and tourism, and that alone is a pretty good bonus, and it kind of makes the open-air museum worth it over, you know, like any other type of, uh, you know, uh, tile improvement that you can put on terrain. Um, the other just kind of little tip for the open-air museum is to use it to kind of put on a dead tile. So I found that whenever I was going, I would have, you know, like a random tile that I really wouldn't want to put a farm on, or, you know, I couldn't put a mine, or it wasn't a good district spot. So I would just toss my open-air museum there because I would get a good amount of culture from it, and it would still make it, a, you know, a, a worthwhile tile to work. So overall, the open-air museum, um, if you're able to settle on a lot of terrain, is an insanely strong tile improvement, and if not, then it's still pretty decent, but it's just not overly insane. Sweden's unique building is known as the Queen's Bibliotheque, and it doesn't replace anything, but it is a tier 2 government building. So, if you do build the Queen's Bibliotheque, then you get, then you uh, can't build the Intelligence Agency, the Foreign Ministry, or the... Oh no, what's the other one? Whatever the other one is called, I can never remember the name of it because I never built it. <laughs> um, but the Queen's Bibliotheque will provide plus two great writer, artist, and musician points per turn, and it will also provide two slots for um, for great works of writing, art, and music. Um, so that is six slots total, so you get two for great works of writing, two for art, and two for music. It's not like two that you can just put anything in, it's the six total, so two for each. And it also gives plus one governor title, as all of the tier two government buildings do. So the Queen's Bibliotheque is actually pretty strong just because um, since it has six slots for great works, that means it does get the theming bonus, and if you fill it up, then you get a lot of tourism and culture from it. I believe it's somewhere, oh man, I can't remember now, but I want to say it's somewhere in the realm of like 80 culture and tourism. Um, that, that might be just totally wrong because I, I, I honestly should have just checked, but um, you do get a lot of culture and tourism if you fill up the Queen's Bibliotheque, and for that, it actually is pretty strong. So before it's themed, it's not going to be, you know, insanely good, but in the long run, it does end up just being more slots for great works, which means more ability to get culture and tourism, which is always a good thing if you're going for culture victories. And then if you're able to fill it up and theme it as well, then it's going to provide an insane amount of both culture and tourism. So definitely something that I think you pick up 100% of the time whenever you are going as Sweden. And now it is time to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Christina and the Swedish in Civilization VI. So for the first strength, um, it's very easy to gain a lot of great people. So namely, this, would, is, this is going to be your scientists and engineers, just because you get those extra great people points from your universities and factories. You also can get some good um, great artists, writers, and musicians, because you do get some bonus points um, towards those from the Queen's Bibliotheque. So there's just a lot of avenues to get you more great people in a game. 
and this kind of leads into their second strength um, in that they have a very strong early diplomatic game because since you're able to get all these great people early on in the game that means you're going to get 50 diplomatic favor from each one which is a lot of diplomatic favor for that early on in the game and thus you're able to kind of control the world congress through a lot of the portion of the game um, this does lead into, you know, the one weakness that they have, though, and that's that later on in the game, your diplomatic gains really fall off because it's a lot harder to recruit uh, great people because there's more time in between um, your recruitments of them, and then eventually it's going to run out of great people, or, you know, the game's going to run out of great people to give, so it's just going to give you the little message that says all great people of this type have been recruited, and then you're actually just out of luck for your, uh, for your diplomatic favor gain. You have no more way to get that bonus. So one of the things that I advise you to do as Sweden is to kind of hoard your diplomatic favor throughout the game. Um, this is assuming that you're planning on winning a diplomatic victory. If you want to win diplomatic victory, then you do kind of have to hoard your diplomatic favor throughout the game. You can't just blow it all, you know, on a single uh, session of the World Congress. You do have to kind of save it up until, you know, the later World Congresses when you actually need a lot to win. Um, so don't go too crazy with your spending throughout most of the game, but you can still, even without spending all of your diplomatic favor, you can still have a lot of control over the World Congress and use that to influence your game. And then that way, later on in the game, you still have a good stockpile built up, and whenever you absolutely need it to get those final few diplomatic victory points, you can go ahead and spend it and win your diplomatic victory. And now it is that time to give Christina her tier ranking. So if you're new to the series, what I do is I give each leader a tier ranking in each of the five victory types, and, and those rankings just kind of gauge how good the leader is at attaining one of those victories. I'm going to give them an overall ranking as well, which takes into account all of those factors, as well as other things such as their versatility, their spawn biases, their unique units, and things of that sort. So all of our rankings go from S to F, with S being the highest and F being terrible. So without further ado, let's go ahead and rank uh, Christina. So Domination is up first, and I think that she deserves a C. She really just doesn't have much going for her for Domination. Um, she does have the Corollian, which is a good unique unit, but even so, um, I think it's more so better just for a timed push with the Corollian rather than going for a Domination game. So just in general, I would never really see myself going for a Domination victory as Christina, but I guess if you really wanted to, you could, and, uh, and thus I think she's just an average Civ in Domination and deserves the C. Science is up next, and I think she deserves a B. Um, this pretty much entirely comes from just her extra uh, great people points from her factories and her universities. So the unfortunate thing is that she doesn't really get any direct bonuses to her science yields, which is definitely very helpful for science because getting to those you know later techs earlier is crucial to, towards making your space parts in a timely manner. Um, but nonetheless, there are some good great scientists that can give you some extra science yields, such as Newton and Einstein, and uh, you know you can just get some extra Eurekas from them as well, and the great engineers are helpful for just giving you a little bit of extra production, you can use them to rush some wonders, or you can use them to rush your space parts, um, so for those extra great people points, I think that definitely puts her above average in science, um, but still not, you know, overly outstanding in science, and thus I think she deserves the B. Culture is up next, and I think that Christina deserves an A. She definitely has a lot of things going for her for culture, um, but she's just, you know, lacking a few things that would make her truly like an outstanding culture sieve and, you know, that prevent her from being in the S tier. So she gets her theming bonuses from some of her buildings that have three or more great work slots, or wonders with two or more great work slots, which are definitely helpful for getting you a lot of culture and tourism as well. As I mentioned though, it does take a while for you to actually feel the effect of this ability because you have to get a lot of great works in order to actually theme, you know, a substantial amount of museums or wonders to actually get a large tourism boost from this or a large culture boost. So throughout a good portion of the game, you are going to go without, you know, a major boost to culture and the open air museum as well. Um, it's kind of the same story, like you can get a lot of culture and tourism from the open air museum, but it doesn't come till nationalism, which is, you know, in the later part of the game. So for those reasons, I think that she only deserves an A rather than an S because you still are going to rely on other sources of tourism like your national parks and your seaside resorts you can't just solely go great works i mean you probably technically could but it, it you still for the most part at least on deity you have to still rely on those seaside resorts and national parks you can't just cruise by like you can on coupe um and for those reasons i think that she deserves the a religion is up oh, man man i can't speak uh, religion is up next, and I think she deserves the C. Not really much to say here, um, she doesn't really get any bonuses towards it, so I think she just deserves the C. 
Diplomacy is last, and I think that she deserves an A in Diplomacy. She's borderline S tier, but just not quite. So as I mentioned early on in the game, um, that 50 diplomatic favor boost when you're getting a lot of great people can get you an insane amount of diplomatic favor. Um, but for winning diplomatic victory, the thing that really matters is your ability to generate favor in the late game, which is where Christina really falls off just because you, you generate great people a lot slower in the late game because you need a lot more points, and eventually you're going to reach the point where um, there are no more great people of a specific type to be recruited, and your supply of extra diplomatic favor is going to be cut off. But she still is definitely above almost, you know, you know the majority of the other leaders in the game, um, but she's just not quite able to have the same late game bonuses as someone like Wilfred or Teddy, so for those reasons I think she only deserves the A, but nonetheless she is still a very strong and competent diplomatic leader. And for her overall ranking, I think that she deserves a B. She's definitely a competent leader, she has some things going for her, um, but she's just not quite strong enough to be, you know, outstanding in the A tier or, you know, super strong in the S tier. Um, instead, she's just she's just kind of good. Um, the other thing with Christina is that she's really, she's one of the less interesting leaders um, that's in Gathering Storm, I find, you know. She doesn't have any specific, like, insane gimmicks, you know, like Coupe starting in the ocean or, like, with Mansa Musa and, you know, his, his ability to purchase things with gold, she's kind of just, you know, like another leader that gets some bonuses and you just kind of roll through the game with her and that's kind of that. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, she is still good. Her bonuses are impactful, especially in the late game with her culture um, and in the early game with her diplomacy. Um, but overall, she's a, she's a little bit of a mixed bag and thus um, I think she's prevented from being in the higher tiers, so hence the B tier rating. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoy the video feel free to like, if not feel, feel free to dislike, if you're looking for more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching, and goodbye.